Hello everyone and welcome to this week's episode of YMC Cast, episode 15 and our finale for season one. It is great to be able to be with you this week. Uh, I'm going to share and play with you to start with and then going to explain a little bit about what we're doing. So let's pray. Heavenly Lord, I want to just thank you for, for YMC Cast for the fact that we've been able to do this for the last 15 episodes, that we've been able to communicate and be able to meet this way. I want to thank you for for everyone that's uh, taken part in it everyone that's contributed all the kind of feedback and things that we've received online it's been great to be a part of and just want to give your your blessing over all of us as we continue in lockdown over the, at the moment and over the summer and pray that we will be seeing the light at the end of the tunnel amen so when we started YMC Cast, we wanted this to be about sharing our stories. Uh, the Methodist Church this year has been in a year of testimony, so we've been really encouraged to share our stories. So this week, I posed a question: Where is God in your story? And we've had so many different responses, and we're going to share with them now, uh, all in kind of different orders. You will see people that are probably quite familiar to you, people that are maybe not so familiar to you. We'll have people that have appeared on YMC Cast before, people that have had that have not. But we want to just be able to share all of this and see where God is in our stories. And to start, we have a very, very, very special guest. He has recently been given the honour of President of the Methodist Church. So I'd like to introduce you to you, to the Reverend Richard Teal, who's going to just give the, our first reflection on where is God in our story. So over to Richard. Thank you so much for asking me to speak for two minutes about where God is in my story. The Methodist, the Methodist Church very recently gave me the huge honour and privilege of becoming its president for a year. I couldn't have come into this office at a more concerning time in the life of our country, our church, our world, with all the effects and the ongoing effects of COVID-19. Despite there being various predictions about the future, no one really knows what our church will be like in a few months' time. Some people are really concerned and burdened by this, whilst others are hugely excited and energised by it. So to come into the presidency at this time is a time so different to anyone else in the past. So where is God in my story at this time? Well, I have set the scene and for me, I have to say, I'm not sure where this year will take me or the church, but I'm very positive because I feel totally upheld by the prayers of the Methodist people. Previous presidents have said this, and I now know the reality of it. I feel totally unworthy for the role, but I also feel assured that God will give me the gifts, the strength, the vision that I will need during the next few months. To be people of faith means we're on a journey. And sometimes that journey is easy, and other times the journey can be difficult. But the journey always takes us to a destination. I know I am on a journey of faith, and where that journey will take me, I'm not aware. But because of the wave of prayer, I know I will arrive. And I will arrive upheld because the best of all is God is with us. Thank you for this opportunity. Hello, Michael has asked me to record a short piece on entitled Where is God in my story? Um, one of the advantages of getting older is that you have a lot of stories to look for and when I look through mine it becomes really quite obvious to me where God was in the decisions that I took, choices I made and paths I went down. It was also obvious where I'd gone off on my own without him. Um, 
the nice thing also is where God sort of has the ability to surprise us. Um, we know if we ask for something that he will, if he can, give it to us. But sometimes he gives us stuff without us even asking, um, which happened to me the first time I went to um, Cell Survivor. I had gone primarily because my three boys went and I felt I should go and help out and not expecting um, anything other than that, to be honest. But I ended up one uh, morning in celebration having a very real experience of God's Spirit coming to me. Um, I say very unexpected, uh, very surprising, but nonetheless a wonderful experience that has stayed with me since then. And this is just one of the many times in my life when I think back where I can quite clearly see um, where God is in my story. And I am thankful that he is a faithful God who has been there and in, continues to be there for me. Thank you. Hi, I'm Verity and I'm a Food Generate Ecumenical Rep. So I think I find God in my story in small but still very significant ways. I have a tendency to overthink and put off decisions and often opt not to do something because it's the easier option. And I feel this is where God really comes in and gives me the push and also the realisation of no, Verity, stop being silly. This is what God is telling you to do. You should stop overthinking and just get on with it. And that's always the push, but also the comfort and support that I need just to get on with it. Uh, for me, an example of this is actually when I applied to be a youth rep. I spent months thinking about it, talking to my parents about it, writing, rewriting the application. And in the end, it was when I felt that push from God, God saying, Verity, stop thinking about it and just do it where I sent in that application about a week before the deadline. So even though it took me a lot longer than it needed to, God was there to guide me into what God was calling me to do and also to support me through that. And I think especially now from that example, I am I'm more aware of God's guidance and support and accept it a lot more readily. And so allow God to step into a much bigger role in my story. Well, hi. Michael asked me, I like he, think he asked some other people as well, um, where is God in my story? Um, and it made me stop and think, like you, you would if you were posed that question, I suppose. And it sort of goes right back when I think about it. Um, so a little bit of my story is that um, my formative years were in Western Supermare and my cousin, who's five years older than me, started dragging me along, and I was only five at the time, um, to a church which she had found um, called the Children's and Young People's Church. And it was in uh, Swiss Road in Western, if you know the town. Um, and... It was a church run by young people, for young people. Um, there was one adult there and her name was Monday. She, her name was Miss Monday or Ina Monday, but everybody knew her as Monday. And she had had a vision to set up and run uh, a children's and young people's church. And so she didn't dismiss the vision and she actually did it. It's an amazing story in its own right, um, which happened sort of just post-war years. Um, and I went along to that little church and absolutely loved it. Um, it was, there was no parents there, it was just all children. So it wasn't full of children dragged along by their parents. It was just those who wanted to be there and it was just the most amazing experience. We all love Monday, um, and we know that she loved us, and she used, she did, in fact, thinking back on it, do what 
we, our expression for the young people today is, our young people here in Yatton, is we love them into the kingdom. And looking back, that's what Mundy did to each one of us. She loved us into the kingdom. But there was more to it than that. Um, I saw faith in action. I could see that it wasn't just something from a book. Um, she trusted and relied on for our survival on her faith. And I'll give you an example. We were a little church. We had a sale of work every year, uh, but our little church wasn't big enough to hold it. So we used to hire the town hall in Western Supermare for our sale of work. Um, and all the stores were set around. In, in, you can imagine, if you know the town hall, very much like our own st uh, our sale of work with different stores around. And just like our own uh, bazaar or sale of work that we have, the cake store made the most money. And the next one that made the most money was what they call the needlework stall. And there was a a primary section store and there was I know there was a boys store as well and the boys store used to get all the bric-a-brac and stuff that nobody else wanted and got that got put on the boys store but it did okay and uh, so there was that but going on whilst all that was happening on the stage at the town hall Monday put a Christmas tree and, I'll, and she put a sign underneath the Christmas tree and the Christmas tree sign said Every tree is known by its fruit, but the fruit of this tree is the fruit of prayer. And it wasn't just something she said and put there. What it was, she grabbed all the teenagers for a separate couple of weeks before, every time after a, a Sunday morning, right, we're going to pray for the cell, I'm going to pray for the tree. Um, we all gathered around in a room and we just prayed for this tree uh, every year. And... The, the day of the sale arrived and the needlework department had been very busy sewing up lots of little bags with hooks on, with loops on, um, all different colours and pretty you know, off cuts of material that they had to, to stitch up these little bags. It was just, they looked quite pretty actually. And, and, and then it was in little trays, the kids would go around with a tray full of these packages saying around the people buying it, if you'd like to, would like to make a donation for our gift tree, which is on the platform, you go up and if you'd like to put some money in the bag and go and put the money on the tree, um, that, that would be help, help our sale. And as the afternoon went on, the people went up onto the stage and hung their bag on the tree. Um, it's the time of great trust really. Um, and, but we just did it. Um, and then when the sale of work came to an end in the evening, um, we all put on a few songs to sing to the people so they stay a bit longer and perhaps buy a bit more because um, the stalls are still open at that time. And then come the time for stripping the tree. And two, two, a table was put up on the stage, a couple of teenagers, there was an adult doing the figures and the counting and so on, checking it all out. And what happened then was they would take an, a, a bag off the tree, uh, tip out the contents onto the table, say, or oh, how much that was, you know, five shillings, we're talking the old money, five shillings, one of them, sixpence, you know, um, sometimes, oh, a pound, you know, and, and then occasionally, mixing with all that, an envelope would come out and it'd be, their eyes would light up, a bag of, a wad of notes, and they count out the notes and it was 20 pounds. I mean, that was a lot of money in, we're talking late 50s, early 60s. Um, and, and then there was always one envelope, opened it up, and it was a really thick bundle of notes. And they counted it out onto the table, and it was £100. That was such a lot of money. Now, we as young people never knew where that money came from. It was always... Um, Monday referred to it as Mr. Anon. Um, but it was just amazing every year. And we had this target we had to keep our telling you about, we prayed for it. And then all the money was added up from the stalls and all the money was added up the tree and all put together. And 
every year we exceeded our target by quite a sum and there was always enough every year we donated as a church a hundred pound gift to the mission to lepers um, we did that every year um, but the important point was that Monday kept making to us as we do our part working hard with the stalls and everything but we trust God to do his part and every year every year the tree got more money than the stalls every year and we had because of that and only because of that enough to survive for the coming year but we had to rely on that there was it was a um, non-denominational self-supporting church there was no central office there was no hierarchy it was just us running our church and it was absolutely lovely and we saw that and Monday had tales of well, we're struggling a bit this week and as an envelope would come through her letterbox with I don't know what it is but God has told me to give you and there'd be a sum of money like could be quite a lot in those days 20 pounds that was big money in those days um, and it was a check uh, for that amount of money um, so we saw faith in action it wasn't something we read about and that stayed with me all my life so I know it works um, so I'm a Christian because I know it works it actually works and I brought that with me to here and uh, when we moved to Yatton um, the nearest church to Grace Close was where the house I have first of all was Yatton Methodist Church so that's why I'm with this church um, that's the only reason really um, but it's been a, another adventure um, what a contrast to my other church but then one Sunday a couple of years after I've been going there um, or oh, we've been going there um, somebody called Ellen Bond, I bet some of you remember her uh, came up to me and said um, Keith, um, we're a bit short of helpers for next Sunday would you like to, could you lend us a hand? Um, and it was almost like, could I? <laughs> you know, and um, so well, what age group would you like to help? and I said, well I'm, I'm a scout leader as well um, so secondary school age I suppose teenagers and it was like oh teenagers oh yes please um, so that was then so 30 years later <laughs> I'm still doing it but through it all God is absolutely central to my church life to my daily life and it's just an amazing thing and if anybody's watching who's not sure or don't know if Jesus is in their heart or life, just make sure. Because it's a, an amazing journey to take. No matter what church you're in, what part of the church you're in, it doesn't make any difference. He's the same. Go for it. Amen. Where is God in my life? Well, me and God have had a very much on and off relationship over the last few years um he's come into my life and he's gone out of my life um but during corona um i started actually to make more time for him and to talk to him more we had a lot of venting going on um and so i see him um a lot more caring and and in loving situations so you've got the wonderful stories of the the two lads who took it on themselves to deliver food and supplies for vulnerable and teachers who delivered school meals to people who wouldn't be able to eat otherwise um and during my own sort of mental health struggles this lockdown um, I've seen him in a lot more care and light um, around me and it makes me thankful for 
the fan, the friend, <laughs> the friends and the family um, that I have around me and supporting me. And in my new job, I see him in the people that I work with and the joy and the happiness that that they have and the gratefulness they have for me to help them do things that I take as ordinary and take for granted. And um, so that that's really up my eyes um, to God. And now I'm, I'm thanking him for allowing me to to do this and to sort of take care of people um, and talk to them and help them with their struggles now that my struggles are sort of coming to an end, hopefully. <laughs> so Lydia and I are going to talk about where God is in our story. And for me at the moment particularly, it's about those surprising moments, times when I wasn't even thinking about God, times when I've got other things on my mind, but suddenly something happens that catches my attention and reminds me of, of God's beauty or God's love or God's majesty. So it might be when I get up in the morning and I'm half asleep, but I look out the window and see the beauty of the, uh, the sunrise or the early day and think how great God is. Um, where I see God in my story is that sometimes it's a simple nudge, a simple little quiet whisper of something in my mind and I think it's an insignificant phone call or an insignificant email to someone but actually God can do immeasurably more than what I can ever ask or imagine through just a quick um, message to me through a picture or through a just quiet whisper and God can do it incredible things through that um it's great to see god in everyone's story in completely different ways bye bye we're interrupting the ymc cast to show you a little something that happened today normally every wednesday the young people and michael have a zoom meeting however this wednesday we decided to surprise michael for his birthday we gathered socially distanced in the park and joined the zoom call as normal with michael none the wiser we then sent someone around to collect him <laughs> Then time for the surprise. Now we go back to the YMC cast. So thank you so much to everyone for sharing that, uh, sharing the, their response and answer to where is God in my story. It's been so good to share with you over the last almost, what, three and a half, four months or so of YMC cast. We've heard so many different stories. We've done so many different things with each of our this within our, our first season. We're going to take a break for the next couple of weeks uh, over the summer period, and we're going to hope to come back even bigger, even better in September. So if you would like to get involved in YMC Cast when we come back, then please do get in contact with me using either my Facebook or my WhatsApp or my email, which is Michael YMC Worker. It's great to be with you and it's been so good to share with you over this past kind of couple of months in this way. So I hope you have a wonderful summer and I look forward to seeing you in September. Cheerio.